We are in transition from help desk to system administrator and today we are starting our hands-on configuration for a router so you're gonna go to the course and this video is we'll be putting we will be putting this under switching and routing and this is going to be under router section ga.org in this section we are basically doing the course help desk to system administrator transition so what we need to know about in this section is about routers and physically configuring it for the first time. So you got this router, you unboxed it, or you got it from a friend, or someone gave it to you. Now it's time for you to connect to it. Remember, there is no mouse keyboard with this stuff. So you need something like these type of cables. So on the back right here or on the front of the router, you'll see this right here. Let's say console. And look, the, the, sun, and the, the color is also blue and this is also blue so it's called console rollover cable okay basically what it is you plug this end of the cable right here it should be very smooth you shouldn't be forcing this in there and you see right here this goes to your the back of your computer so the back of the computer should have something like this if you have an old computer you will see this serial port those are pins right there and this cable the other end of this cable will go inside here and then you will use software like putty the things that we're going to discuss uh, right after this um, we're going to do that part if you don't see this on your computer if you have a laptop new ones then you need to get something like this USB serial to this one this cable right here so you're you put this USB in your laptop and then the other end of your cable you you'll basically put this in there these are pins right there okay so here's an example right here like see there's no pins here on this side but on the USB this should go to your laptop and the pins should be here then you plug this right here and then you use your software now what we're gonna do let's set up our first router like just connecting to it in this video we'll just connect to it using two different softwares so right here I have another 2800 router and sometimes it could be the front of the router so I have my console cable connected right here and the back of the PC look I have two serial ports one is right here I can I can plug another like switch in there but this router is connected to this serial port that's internal and that's basically external right there which I have connected to it I mean I have to connect another things to it but for now the router is connected right here now if you are following my labs I am basically setting up this PC that's going to be directly connected to the router and then I'll have another Ethernet from my modem or your Wi-Fi device and I'm going to connect it because I need an internet connection while I am doing this I am going to be installing software if you don't then you're gonna to need to put it on a USB and put it on the computer where you're going to be setting these up so I don't have that right now because I want to show you guys that so I'm going to get connection directly from my router so a lot of people will get confused how do you get the connection um, so that's why I want to show you this if you're following my uh, videos then this is what I'm doing this is connected to my router or Linksys or whatever you wanna you have internet connection get it plug it in I got the lights okay now you can use Windows 7 server or anything maybe Linux but as long as you have internet connection and these softwares are supported you can basically use it putty is basically a big software a lot of people use it so we're going to use putty and there's another software I'm going to show you guys I will use that so let's go ahead and download putty we know our router is connected right now um, and we haven't turned it on yet so first I'm going to download putty so you basically putty all right so this time we are going to connect to our router but to do that you need basically you can use it Windows 7 Windows servers if you have servers you can use like Linux or anything as long as these softwares are supported by your operating system so it's not only putty you can find something else also like um, there's putty there's a um, CRT one and then there is basically uh, mobile mobile is the one that I'm going to be really using in this course so putty you basically go to Google and download click here 
and basically I went to download right here. You can download PuTTY click here. And then I basically do, did the whole installer, PuTTY 0.67 installer.exe. It sees right here, Windows installer. You could get the portable ones too, uh, depending on what system you use. So there's other options, so you can use that. But I installed the exe. And when I installed it on my computer, I see right here, PuTTY. And I basically click on this, or I can send this to my desktop. So then I have it. The second thing that I downloaded on the internet, is mobile X term okay when you do that you'll see this right here mobile X term free X server when you click on it you get this get mobile X term now um, then you get to download now the free one and it tells you what it can do the reason I like this a lot because we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, um, sorry the uh, Windows stuff and connecting to Windows, different type of uh, technologies. Remember, this course is not just like Cisco routers. It's, it's going to move to Windows servers, Mac servers, and things like that. So we need something that we can uh, follow on and have everything in one place. And this is why I like this over PuTTY. Now, we're going to test both of these two. So you can get the portable or installer. I already installed it. You click on it. You run this, and you will see something like this. You go to All Programs. And then you'll see mobile X term personal edition and then you can send that to your desktop I'm going to show you guys I have it on my desktop and I have my putty on the desktop so now we got the software we got the cable connected to the router all I need to do now is to turn on my router let's go and turn it on there you go the sound is pretty good remember we're doing all this thing physically because Remember, that's how you want to do real practice. Okay, so now this is going through that boot process. In the last video when I talked to you guys, like, go ahead and learn about the boot process. This is going through that boot process right now. Um, so let's go ahead and use PuTTY to connect to using the serial connection. You will basically open PuTTY for the first time and then you will see serial right here. Now you see right here, it automatically connects COM1 9600 is the speed so if I say you know what let me see if my serial port is on COM1 I'm gonna say open when you do open you click enter now it's telling me that my router is actually not using COM1 so what you need to do click OK go open putty again go to serial and do COM2 now you are COM2 and 9600 I'm gonna say open and I'm gonna say enter alright so it's still not using Okay, we got two more. Open PuTTY, go to serial connection, and do COM3. It's not connected. Okay, good. We're going to do COM4 now. Not connected. Okay. What is going on here? That's a good thing to find out. So now I'm going to go back to my console cable and make sure everything is connected correctly. So I see that my console cable is connected and my serial making sure. So I'm going to basically do is unplug my cable and plug it back into my computer. Great troubleshooting right here, guys. First troubleshooting started real world. So now putty again. Let's go back to putty. Let's do serial again, COM1, open. No luck. Okay, let's do COM2. Serial, COM2. There you go. What a great troubleshooting right there, guys. I love this because this is something that you will not see when you do packet tracing my friends that this is where people can get stuck and maybe real world scenario will be a network engineer call you and he says hey can you connect to the physical router and then you plug in another PC that have an internet connection so I can get in can you do that so this process at least if you do this you will give a connection to a network engineer so he will do his stuff 
but you did something basic at this level which if you didn't know now you know that's how you troubleshoot now you see how i went to com one two three four this four so you, if you see that it's, it didn't work for one it didn't work for two three four then go back to your computer unplug the cable plug it back and then try again now this is where we have it we are connected to the router this video was all about how to connect physically to the router and this is how you do it on putty right but before i do this i want to show you guys the boot process that we talked about i'm going to turn off router and turn it on again you guys see that right there it's basically doing the boot process it's looking for information it's checking the memory hey do i have the memory do i have the the configuration file do i have the ios do i have everything like that it's basically checking that and then now it's basically opening up the computer this is basically the same as a computer starting normal computer it looks for boot process then it goes back and say oh do you have windows or do you have linux and then it will show you the screen right and then you use your mouse and keyboard but in here you don't have mouse and keyboard the only way to use mouse and keyboard is through that cable console cable rollover cable so you use that over there right so now that was the boot process but what if I take that flash out, compact flash, I'm going to take that out because my system is in there. I'm going to turn it off, turn it on again. Now let's see what happened. It is going through the boot process, right? And bam, it stopped going ahead. I mean, this says right here, compact flash not present. So what, what could be a real scenario over here that somebody would call you, let's say somebody went there and they were playing with the router, and somehow they clicked that little button and then they took the flash out, the compact flash, which is right here. They took this out and now your whole network, your main router, let's say this was your main router. There's nothing redundancy or nothing like that. And it's stuck. And somebody figured this out. This could be one of the reasons. Your network engineer say, hey, can you go to the compact, look at the, the, the router and there's a compact flash right in front of the router if this, if this, if this router supports this stuff. They'll tell you, can you check that if everything is plugged in or it is, like, you know, in there correctly. So I'm going to go back and plug it back in and make sure that it's in there. And I'm going to go ahead and restart my router. Now, this should go ahead and basically finish the boot process and everything should be in there. And I should be in the router like it should be, okay? There's lights coming up, things going on right now and you will see the router should basically pick it. There you go. So now they're telling me that there's an image and I'm saying, yeah, okay, this is okay. And next it's gonna tell me, okay, this router is good. Uh, it will do some little process right there. And that's it. It looked for all the information that it needed. And now you should be inside the router. So it'll take a second depending on your memory and all that. It could be a very powerful router. It could be an old router. Old router can take time. So um, after right after this, I'm going to show you guys how to use the other software. And you can use other other softwares, many other softwares to connect to router like this. As long as they support serial. So there you go. Would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? And then that's it. After this, we're going to make another video how to configure the router for the first time when you're inside the router first. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's talk about the other software that we downloaded is MOBA Xterm, right? I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. There you go. You know why I like this? Because everything is so centralized and there's a lot of tools you can use, which we'll discuss later on. But to connect to the router through this software now, all you got to do is right click on it, go to new session. And here are the sessions. Look at this. In one portable, or maybe you installed it, you have SSH, you have Telnet, you have RDP. Remember, we're talking about we're going to do DHCP servers, DNS servers, all other servers, FTP, SFTP. We're going to put everything in one place, so that will be really easy for us to follow along in this course. So now what we're going to do is they should have serial right here. And that's the same thing that you did in PuTTY, right? You're going to click on that. One thing you need to change is the speed over here. 9600. You're going to use that. And it says COM1 communication, and there are two communications right now. So you can check COM1. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Click enter. This is not 
the right one. Remember, we have to check it now. We're going to close this out and say yes. I'm going to create a new session now. I'm going to say serial, change the speed to 9600, and I'm going to use COM2, and I'm going to say OK. Enter. There you go. I'm inside the router. The reason I love this is now I can do a lot of things in this. For example, if I'm teaching here or you are basically trying to uh, look at this screen bigger, all you have to do is right click and you can have all of these options and play around with this very quickly. And putty, you have to go and do configuration, save it. Here you can just say control and play around with your mouse. So if you hit the control and your mouse scroll up and down the wheel, it should go up and down. So look at this. If I can, if I hit my control and I go up, look at this. If I can play around with this, right? So one thing is that, or whatever you do in this router, all the configuration can be recorded, meaning you can save it to the file. Everything single command will be saved instantly, very quickly. You can reset a terminal. You can basically do full screen on this or you can also change the colors and it has its own Cisco um, um, syntax too. So if you click right here and go to Cisco networking configuration, basically it will give you different colors for different commands. Okay. We're going to do this later on, but for now I showed you how to use two different softwares and connect to the router. One last thing I would like to show you on this is the, the macro uh, in these things, which is really cool. Like if I type all these commands and I, and I say, you know what, I'm going to share this macro with someone and I will set this, uh, this router for you. You don't have to touch anything. I can start recording all the macros. But that's something else. We're, we're going to discuss that later on. But for now, we are inside the router. Next video, we are going to configure this router. How to get into this router is done. We're going to now name this router. We are going to put a password on this router. We are going to add an interface to this router so we can connect through an IP address we will be not using we're not going to be using right here the serial we're going to be using SSH or Telnet meaning we can be sitting anywhere on network or anywhere somewhere that I can access the IP address and bam I can be inside the router but physical connection to the router for you to understand this is extremely important because I just showed you some troubleshooting and we just did some troubleshooting in front of you guys and that was our first video. We are going to conclude this video with this and I'll see you guys in our second video where we'll, we will configure and name our router for the first time. Thank you for watching and make sure you take this course on jobsclipshare.org.